to bore you much about what uh, the political theories or the administrative jargons <coughs> tell us about our life in Pakistan. But uh, I want to talk to you about 25 to 30 minutes. And after 20 and 35 minutes, I leave the discussion to you to ask me any question which comes into your mind. My topic today is about uh, the governance issues and the tribal setup. Now, one thing you must know, be knowing that after World War II, or long before changes in, the, in Europe, industrial changes or the changes in America as the American Revolution or the French <coughs> Revolution, the face of the earth and the definitions of politics, culture, education have changed tremendously. And uh, today, all the modern states which exist on the map of the world face certain issues, uh, certain problems within their own jurisdiction. Maybe cultural problems, political problems, economic problems. So our country, Pakistan, being a nation state on the map of the world, also faces certain ethnic, national, religious, tribal issues also. Now it all depends on the policy makers to sit together, hands together, and to find out solutions to these problems which the modern state of Pakistan faces. My own view is that uh, the clash between the provinces of federated units of Pakistan and the central government of Pakistan is all due to certain misconceptions regarding definitions of certain terms. Let me explain it, what I mean by, by this, this vague statement. As you know, as a student of politics, that we are all social animals. Aristotle has long before defined us social animals. We live in society and we have our own definition of things. All the societies know about democracy, equality, fraternity, brotherhood, and so many other things which we normally use in political judgments. It does not mean that the tribal societies or the primitive societies don't have these concepts. They have these concepts. They have these definitions. But the, the, the area or the width or the expansion of the, those definitions will be different from uh, your definition. For example, in a tribal society, people talk of democracy, people talk of uh, equality, people talk of uh, hospitality, <coughs> as you talk. But now, maybe your definition of democracy is different. For example, in a borrowed society, the definition of democracy is to follow the tribe, to accept the norms of hospitality, to love each other, to help each other, to love the community. For example, for a religious man, the, the whole idea of good life or virtue is to follow God and to be obedient to God. Likewise, a tribal society, people have their own definitions. Now the clash starts 
when our definitions clash, our means the central government's definitions clash with the tribal definitions. Now when I say hospitality, I mean that you should be helping hand to the community, to your guests, to entertain them, to talk to them, to sit with them, to communicate with them. But in a civic society, in a more cultural society, so to say, the Mehman Nawazi or the hospitality is something very odd. People don't want to spend their money on others. Why should they help other people? Let them, they should earn their own livelihood. As people say, in America, there is no concept of free lunch. But in our tribal society, we, we, we don't uh, take this point into consideration because in, in all cases we have to entertain our guests. In a desert, in a village, in a wilderness, when there are long distances and there is shortage of water and there is shortage of food and shortage of so many other facilities of life. If you are traveling in a desert and suddenly you feel hunger as you feel to take rest from rain or sun or snow, then you have to take, go to a village and the village people, they welcome you, they talk to you. So to cut the, the whole story short, what I will say is that there has been a clash as you have been hearing about uh, the political issues of Pakistan. I was, I have served in Rajasthan as assistant commissioner, as commissioner, as deputy commissioner, as secretary of education for a very long time. My experience has been very smooth. Smooth in the sense that I followed the same tribal traditions which they were following. I talked to them in their own language. I solved their problems in the same way, keeping in view the standards which they had set for themselves. One thing you should remember, that all the people want to be judged by their own standards. You in Multan, you have your own standards, so you will be very happy. If you, if, you, if you are dead by all standards. So, in Manojistan, six, five hundred or one thousand years, people have their own standards regarding their marriage, regarding their death, regarding their fights with each other. We have set patterns. We have set patterns how to solve our problems, how to, how to reconcile after fighting with each other, how to arrange our marriages, how to deal with our enemies, our friends and foes. Now all these, it does not mean that a tribal society is beyond the civilization. Yes, we are part of the human civilization. But maybe we have our own definitions. Now you must consider certain sensitivities of the of those areas. There is no harm, there is no sin if they believe on certain issues. Like their marriages, like their tribal clashes. You should not impose values and thoughts from above. When you impose values and thoughts upon other people, then that arises a clash. And that clash is then expressed into political ideologies, or religious ideologies, or tribal ideologies, and thoughts. And then there is a fight between the center and the province. The important point is equality, social political, cultural, economical, above all, 
these are the most important things which we have to follow. And these are the things which all human beings, all societies, whether primitive or classical or whether modern or whether new, all people have a sense of virtue. All people have a sense of good and bad. All people have their own definitions. Yes, I do agree that it is not necessary that we should stick to our old systems of thought forever. Life is dynamic. Life is progressing. Life is moving from one place, point B to point A, point to B and C. The Greeks have told long before that you cannot step into the same river twice. When you put your feet into the flowing water, that water is already changed. It's a new water. It means that our life is dynamic. Our culture is dynamic. Our tribal, religious, cultural thoughts are dynamic. They are changing. Today, people give more importance to the community. Community is more important. If you if you if you don't work for community, your religious or tribal thoughts may, may, may have no meaning. But if you work for the welfare of your people, when you perform some duty for them, like building hospitals, building roads, opening up schools, colleges, institutions. So they talk to you. Tribal society is a very challenging society. Long before Britishers came to this part of the world, they studied the psychology of the tribes people. The place which we are sitting here in Multan, a political officer, Mr. Robert Sandelman, he crossed this mighty Port Monroe and he decided that he should go and uh, subjugate and dominate the wild people of Balochistan. For Britishers, we were wild beasts fighting with each other, having no sense. So Robert Sandeman is a book, a book, Peaceful Conqueror of Balochistan, which I have read. He says that when I went to Fort Monroe, I called a conference of Baloch Sardars. And I asked them to obey and follow the British Raj. If anyone defies and denies, then he will be punished. So he says that in that group, in that delegation, one Sardar with his big pug turban, he stood up and he asked me, Mr. Robert Sandeman, tell me, who are you? From where you are coming? You are coming from 6,000 miles to do this. We don't accept your rules. We are our rules. Robert Sandeman says that I just postponed the, cancelled the meeting. And some other sardars who were against that sardar, they came to me and they said, Sir, what do you want? He says that I told the sardar that I want the head of this Baloch After 10 days or 15 days, Robert Sardar says that he was riding on his horseback in this area. Far away, he saw some dust rising 
a horseman was coming to him. When he reached the Robertson Neman, there was a poetry or some sort of uh, thing was before him. So he threw that poetry. He said, this is the head of that Sardar, which denied him. So British rule was ruthless. They had come from 10,000 miles. This area, we had our own cultural, social, political values. But they did not consider, take it into consideration. They had their own say. And then finally they dominated us to brute force. So, my point is that basically keep in mind that the ideas of sovereignty, the ideas of good life, the ideas of equality, also change. For a religious man, obeying God is the highest virtue. For Rousseauian, who defines sovereignty as the, the public is the supreme authority. So everything is dynamic, everything is changing, everything is. I have served in Pakistan and I have noted that people were very happy following their own old traditions. I think we should have, we should have, we should have mended or we should have refined those values for the betterment of the people. Instead of, instead of uh, finishing or bringing an end to those values. Remember one thing, if you want to change old value system, then bring new value systems which are compatible to the people's life, which are doable, which you can do, which you can perform. Otherwise, what is the use of your value system? Unfortunately, after the petitions, we could not understand properly the mind of, the collective mind of this country. And uh, we created schisms and contradictions and wide between the people. Pakistan is one country. If you want to develop our Pakistani hood, then we must uh, support all the federal units. Then we must introduce a just economic system. Then we, we should treat everybody equally. So this is what it is required, apart from the fact that uh, sometimes we impose our will without the concept of without the concept of our own people. Then there was a clash. Pakistan has passed through so many insurgencies and so many clashes in the past. Hopefully, in the days to come, our policy makers will realize more and they will define their terms and they will define the, their own definition of democracy, their own definition of religious tolerance, brotherhood, equality, in the new, in, in the new definitions. Pakistani society I think uh, requires some new definitions of our political and religious tribal issues. Somebody has to define it. For example, secular does not mean to be irreligious. Now, this is a definition some religious people define secularism in, in some other ways. But for an educated man, Liberalism or secularism, a democracy does not mean to be religious. 
people with uh, good conscience, good democratic norms, they follow God, and they pray to God, they are religious people. Religion has nothing to do with your definitions. These are all your definitions that you define. You define democracy when you want it, the way you want it. It is not necessary that I should agree with your defi narrow definition of democracy or your narrow definition of democracy or your narrow definition. Everybody is free to see the things in, in, in the light of new uh, education and knowledge. So ladies and gentlemen, I think uh, I talked uh, about 20 minutes and it is sufficient to give you some idea of travel. Now you are free to ask me any questions.